Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Table Talk with Wakeem Ahmed. Today we are going to discuss women empowerment and issues related to that. I am delighted to have Dr. Rania Azmi with us. She was chosen by the Asset International magazine as one of the brightest 40 under 40 investment stars. Women Speakers Association declared her Women of Influence. She leads Fadia Survive and Thrive International Cancer Association. She has spoken in over 78 cities around the globe. Dr. Rani Azmi, welcome to the show. Dr. Rania, in your eyes, what are the top issues faced by the women globally? Well, uh, that's an excellent question. The women uh, empowerment issues would never end. I, I see uh, different dynamics that have been there for uh, many years and still for years to come, especially related to, uh, uh, I wouldn't call equal treatment, but being uh, equally appreciated in the workplace, equally promoted and uh, taken seriously in the senior level. If we are talking about the corporate world, if we are talking about the work-life balance, it's a struggle for uh, women more than their male counterparts uh, for many reasons related to be, uh, being uh, uh, mothers, sisters, uh, daughters, uh, uh, you name it. Uh, and uh, so she are, uh, I, I don't like to exaggerate, but they are uh, the most important uh, <laughs> member of the society uh, without which um, I think the, the families, the businesses, uh, the, the empathy in the world will not be the same. Uh, and I'm not dismissing the importance of our uh, uh, counterparts, but uh, it just, uh, we are created to, uh, with more empathy, I would say. So, in other words, how would you say, what are the major hurdles in women empowerment? I, if, if I say one word, to be short, it would be labels. Uh, uh, pre-judgment stereotypes just like uh, these a few words that uh, carry behind them big issues so uh, again the hurdle is um, uh, let's talk uh, firstly at the professional level uh, at, at the senior level or at the entry level for fresh graduates um, when a male uh, a candidate enters the workplace they will be um, assessed and judged uh, based on their merit, as opposed to the female counterpart, there will be all uh, pre-judgment or stereotypes. And I'm not saying this is uh, this is for 100 percent. If we are talking about different regions, different countries, we can talk about 80 percent of the cases, or 40 percent, or 20 percent of the cases, which I notice, for example, in countries like the States, Italy, and then the Middle East. Uh, the uh, Middle East, we have the lion share in these labels. Uh, but it, it would be for a female counterpart, like there's a stereotype, oh, she would be, um, you know, the, the saying that uh, she's a good vision but cannot uh, hard work uh, or she's not clever enough and, and these sort of things. At the social level, uh, there is something that um, uh, one of the, um, I would say, politician uh, said once that the women work never get done. <laughs> because we we have many things uh, many many things to do uh, and it's um, there there will never be enough time to fulfill our ambition dr rania you work globally what are the myths about women in different societies you have come across well when it comes to um, uh, i would say we have in reality my conviction we have more similarities than differences um, if people in any circle, personal, professional, social, uh, political, economic circles, don't know you, just meet you and try to make a judgment what a kind of person you will be based on the way you are uh, uh, handling yourself. Maybe we have these labels of religion, nationality, uh, gender, uh, all these sort of labels to give you an indication what this person could be. So at, at this point, uh, official level, I would say that we assume all sorts of differences. Once we have an exposure, you get to know this person, whether it is a female or male and, uh, and, and across the universe, we will find these similarities. So 
being myself exposed to different uh, uh, countries by, by work, like over 31 and, and 70 something cities, uh, I, uh, I am keen always to, um, I would say, mingle with like-minded people. So I didn't find any flagging issue. Uh, always the, the issues would be with, uh, with um, uh, less of a deeper level of interaction. And I, I hope I'm not confusing your, uh, your audience. Okay. What is the level of gender equality in different parts of the world? Well, that's a big question, and, and I, I don't like to um, uh, give uh, uh, just like, you know, a random answer because we have to rely on basic research or statistics. But I would say, again, from my humble experience, um, gender equality is taken very seriously in a country like the United States. So I would say, uh, and, and don't quote me for these um, uh, percentage terms to be accurate, I'm just giving a, a relative uh, picture. Uh, between uh, 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 three milestone countries, because I have been working on them, uh, the US, Italy, uh, Germany, and then we can compare them with Egypt as well. So gender equality in the States would be, um, uh, uh, if there are issues related to gender equality, would be less than uh, 30%. Uh, in Italy, would be something like 25%. Uh, uh, and in countries like Germany, uh, it will be less than 10% and in Egypt would be 60%. So just like I'm, I'm giving you a, a abrupt uh, percentage just to compare. So it's a bigger of, it's, the issue exists in all countries, but it's a, a smaller in, in, a, in a country focused on, on, on work merits like Germany uh, compared to Italy, which is a Mediterranean uh, well, some parts of Italy in, in the Mediterranean, so they have some of the cultures of, uh, uh, of some of the cities in the Middle East, like uh, Alexandria and Egypt, for example, uh, and the state as well. So the, li the lion's share is still, is still in our region. Dr. Rania, this has been observed that women, film directors, pilots, engineers, politicians, and heads of states are nowhere near 50% of the world population. What is your take on this? Uh, it's, it's not a surprise, but it's a shame because we have seen uh, when women get into um, uh, leadership positions or in power, we have seen real time how uh, um, a better world it, it was uh, or has been. In, in cases of the states that um, uh, where uh, a female head of state uh, resides. Um, and there are several countries, especially during the pandemic, by the way, uh, where, where the empathy and the, the, the female leadership style um, shined up uh, among, um, compared to their male counterparts, at least. And, and I actually have to say that this is improving, uh, at least like in a country like, uh, uh, Egypt and Kuwait, uh, I can see that there are female ambassadors for different countries represented more than before. So I think we are heading in the right direction and, um, uh, and, and it has to be always based on merit. I am against, uh, although I am all into women empowerment, I am against having a quota for women to be represented in uh, political, economic or social uh, power or top leadership uh, based on quota like just to have a checklist that we are diversifying. It has to be based on merit. So if, uh, if two candidates uh, in, in that senior position uh, and the female would do a better job, it should be, uh, it, it should be uh, um, uh, assessed as such. One of your specialty is the financial sector. And in financial sure. sector, women at director level are underrepresented compared to their number, where does this take to us? Uh, that's uh, that's an, uh, an interesting uh, observation. And, and I, I, I tried in my, uh, in my space uh, in the financial sector, which I have been there for, the, for more than 22 years. Uh, and I can tell you that back in 2009 and even 2011, I had a dedicated research uh, about uh, comparing the investment uh, or financial performance between male uh, and female uh, fund managers. Uh, and that, uh, that study was independent, done in the region. 
and in a few years from uh, after the results in 2009 and 11, uh, in 2015, if I remember correctly, the Financial Times reported similar study, but in the hedge fund space. So there, there are research and case studies and observations coming up and uh, we're trying to be objectively pointing at that female uh, investment and financial managers are doing better job than their male counterparts and yet they are less represented. And I can tell you why in the financial sector and more so in all uh, the workplace uh, and that's according to studies as well because I, I always uh, tend to uh, form my uh, convictions based on evidence. So uh, if a woman uh, gets into the workplace, let's say in the financial industry, uh, less than 20% of 100 of women applying to this job in the financial sector would negotiate their terms of engagement, as opposed to 80% of their male counterparts would negotiate that. So that gives you an indication that um, uh, female uh, financial professionals assume that they will get appreciated automatically based on their based on their performance based on their deliverables and impact in the market and in their respective organizations at a time this is a reality and you have to negotiate and uh, ask for basic uh, uh, rights uh, related to uh, be fairly compensated um, uh, again based on merit based on performance not entitled because someone is a female or a male so this is it's interesting observation and I don't have an answer except that it's um, uh, it's interesting it's uh, it's ev everything is not taken for granted you have we have to work for it it's time to have a break and we'll continue the program after the break welcome back my next question is why is it like this that in some parts of the world or in most parts of the world that nursing is very popular with the women what is your study nothing in terms of what like there are some cases which are popular uh, it's not very pessimistic no the data is showing don't you think that in in terms of industry or some sectors so it, it shows that health sector is mostly um, women's role is very dominating in some parts i believe i uh, if i understand you correctly you see you you uh, you think uh, or, or the statistics shows that uh, there there is uh, more trust uh, in uh, in uh, in men compared to women in different professions globally I mean, in the healthcare and finance, etc. In the healthcare, in the healthcare, women are more dominating. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes. See. <laughs> well, that's yeah. that's a, that's not a surprise uh, because they are uh, more empathizing, so they can they can yeah. sustain a, a career in healthcare. I, I thought you were initially talking about the issue of trust because the, we are in an ecosystem. If the society thinks that the men doing better job, uh, even if the performance is better uh, uh, done by a female, the, the demand will go to uh, to their uh, men colleagues. So it's a, it's a vicious cycle. Mm. So I, I I agree with you, uh, Doctor Rania. Where is the role of education in women, women empowerment? Education is always the best equalizer for, for everything. That's, that's, my, uh, that's my conviction. Uh, I, I see all, all the, the misconceptions, all the stereotypes, uh, the, the prejudgment, uh, all connected to some sort of ignorance. Uh, and that's uh, to our earlier conversation that the more you get to know someone, and I always say even any creature, like not only humans, like cats or dogs, like the more you would appreciate them. But we don't have the luxury of time or, or effort or energy to spend to get to know the other party. Uh, so education is the best equalizer uh, and it's, um, it's, uh, it's our best hope to, to have uh, empowerment for all because we cannot do empowerment for women 
uh, and then leave the, the men behind. One of the most hilarious uh, comments I heard uh, when we talk about these women challenges at the workplace that men say like women took more than enough attention and now we need to have a men club to advocate for our rights which it's it's not a hot potato game it's uh we really need to support each other it's it's not who gets more attention what are the most interesting projects you have seen which empower the women throughout the world well, that was uh, a while ago. Uh, by far, was the most interesting is the um, you know you, the sustainable development goals right now with the UN. It used to be um, the Millennium, uh, 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 the development goals. Uh, they 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 were called sustainable development goals after the expiration uh, of these Millennium development goals, and they set progressive objectives, measurable in all states uh, in different uh, criteria and factors, including gender equality and empowerment. Uh, and uh, in, I think it was prior to 2015 when they introduced a sustainable development program, they called for global consultation. And I submitted uh, um, a research uh, uh, evidence-based uh, program relying on my uh, um, mathematical model in, in the PhD it's called goal programming, like your aims programming, not a computer programming. Uh, so I put the several factors that um, by the UN deemed appropriate to measure the gender empowerment. Uh, and I, I tried to measure um, how far did they succeed in 10 years in achieving each factor. So it was like 40% or 10% or even the, 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 the improvement was not existent in some of the factors. So that was very interesting to measure because we always talk about these issues without uh, uh, a, uh, a platform or a framework to measure it and b uh, numbers uh, to compare it and benchmark where we stand. So that's uh, on the top of my head at the moment, but there are many other interesting uh, projects. The countries facing the war or any natural calamity, role of women become more difficult and challenging. In terms of our subject, women empowerment, what happens on those societies? It's also uh, something that I look at it in a, in a big say um, that we are in the 21st century and we would have never imagined that we would have failing states like in Yemen, Iraq, Syria, and now the war in Ukraine and dislocated uh, uh, women and men and young, uh, young population. It's, it's a shame uh, on the humanity, but there are many things that can be done. And, and actually one of the one of the progressive uh, ideas or projects that I am involved in is uh, there is an online university which is one of its kind uh, because it's uh, and, it, and it's um, uh, its proposition or gift to the humanity that it's tuition free so uh, any dislocated uh, student or even someone who didn't continue their education they can sign up and they can get uh, um, a scholarship uh, not to mention the already subsidized or tuition-free uh, uh, model, uh, and it's called the University of People. So it's uh, there. I, I see initiatives like everyone in their own space can do something to improve the current situation, but it's in my mind very unnecessary. Uh, it's uh, just uh, quickly uh, since you raised this point. Uh, in one of the conferences I presented at, I, I was able to get some numbers that uh, as a humanity, like globally, we spend in percentage term at least 20, 30 times more uh, financials, money and funds in weapons and military equipment more than we spend it in healthcare, for example. And you can make the same comparison with uh, housing, with schooling, it's uh, it, uh, it's it's a shame that we again we are in the 21st century and we are thinking about more war as opposed to more welfare uh, and more education and more health 
to, to the population uh, that should be accessible to everyone. Because we are an ecosystem. Like it, it doesn't help that I am living in a good uh, living condition and my neighbor is not. One way or another, we will breathe the same air. We are living in the same ecosystem. So uh, it's, it's not naive to, to ask for this or to, to raise this point. My last question is, those women who are working and raising the children at the same time, how they can have work-life balance? Oh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is an interesting question and, and it uh, goes back to, uh, to the basics. Uh, don't get over uh, occupied by your work or by your family. There has to be a me time, like for each of these women, or even men. You you need to have um, a, dis a disconnecting time, and uh, you disconnect from the surrounding, but you connect with yourself. We need more connection within ourselves, like uh, the uh, some circles call it grounding, like being connected to nature, like a beach or or a park, or just just to uh, try to involve yourself with something. Uh, bigger and, and natural uh, as opposed to being occupied with daily routine uh, related to work or family commitments and responsibilities because it, it, it will uh, eventually reach a point of a burnout which is uh, not good and not productive and obviously not the aim of any person to reach that point so before getting into that try to have a me time like a you time um, uh, and everyone knows what makes them happy or make them, um, I would say, uh, uh, refreshed, <laughs> other than uh, long vacations. Good. Thank you very much, Dr. Rania Azmi. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Dr. Rania Azmi, thank you very much for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, this was today's program surrounding women empowerment and related issues. I hope you would like it. I will join you again in the next program. Until then, goodbye.